few months ago, I swapped out my MacBook Pro for a Raspberry Pi 4. I wanted to see if I could still be productive with my day-to-day -day work using a tiny ARM computer running Linux. Now, obviously, replacing a Core i9 laptop with 32 gigs of RAM, a dedicated GPU, and two terabytes of really fast storage with a tiny ARM processor with eight gigs of RAM and a slower USB hard drive makes for a slower system. And using an ARM processor instead of x86 also made for a few quirks in terms of software support. Some of the software I wanted to use on the Raspberry Pi wouldn't work or had to be recompiled, souring my first day trying to work with the Pi. So I gave up that effort, but I will definitely try it again sometime because it's really fun to see what the Pi can do. Well, a few weeks ago, someone from Mindshare Management asked me if I'd like to do the same test, but this time with a worthy almost one-for-one -one replacement laptop, the new Kubuntu Focus M2. I said yes, and they sent me a laptop to test out for a few weeks. It's not mine to keep, and they didn't pay me anything for this review. I just wanted to see if a laptop that's built to be, and I quote, a PC laptop to beat the MacBook Pro could really replace my Mac in my day-to-day -day workflow. So does it? Well, on the spec sheet, it certainly makes a strong case. The processors are extremely similar, though the MacBook Pro has the 9th generation CPU versus the 10th generation CPU in the Focus. The GPUs are also similar in spec, but the Focus has a lot more VRAM available. I don't game too much or use the GPU for AI or machine learning, but if you care about those things, having the option of CUDA cores and the NVIDIA GPU might be helpful to you. The memory in the Focus is slightly faster, but it doesn't make a huge difference in most of my day-to-day -day work. The SSDs are comparable in performance, and you can configure up to 2 terabytes in the Focus, but if you're willing to pay Apple's steep upgrade price, you can expand the boot volume to 4 terabytes on the MacBook Pro. Both laptops are in the same price class. If you try to match the two spec for spec, the Mac is still going to be around 10% more expensive, but you have to consider the slightly better build quality, the higher quality screen, and other features that the Mac provides. The hardware and design on the Focus is certainly good. It's a thin, light laptop with a typical chiclet keyboard, a glass trackpad, and an assortment of different ports and expansion slots. The laptop isn't quite as thin as the MacBook Pro, but the overall styling isn't garish like the first version of the Focus was. I was about to let Redshirt Jeff go to town on the laptop to see what's inside, but lucky for the Focus, he didn't have to do that because I found this article on notebookcheck.net that goes into a very deep dive into the hardware and internals. The Focus is not actually manufactured by Kubuntu or Mindshare Management. Instead, it's a Kubuntu branded version of the Schenker Key 15. Check out the article using the link in the description if you want a deep dive into the hardware and design. But here's a quick overview of the hardware itself. It has ports on both sides as well as on the back. On the back, it has a Thunderbolt 3 port without power delivery, a power port, an HDMI port, and a mini display port. On the left side, it has a Kensington lock, micro SD card slot, a Type A USB 3.0 port, a headphone jack with digital audio output, and a mic input jack. On the right side, it has two more Type-A USB 3.0 ports and a gigabit network jack with a flip-down connector. On the front, it has power, battery, and disk activity LEDs, which can be seen even with the lid closed. When you open it up, there's a mic and a 720p webcam with a built-in privacy color, a full-size keyboard with a slightly unique keyboard layout, and an offset trackpad with two physical buttons underneath. The fit and finish is very good, though it doesn't have the same solid feel as my MacBook Pro, especially the screen, which has a little bit of flex to it when you open and close it. And the trackpad is generously sized and feels pretty good, but once you get used to Apple's massive and awesome glass trackpad, nothing can ever really compare. The keyboard has RGB LED lighting, but I just set it to the whitish color setting when I needed the backlight. One thing I really don't like about the keyboard is how the arrow keys kind of blend into the area around the shift key and the number keys. It's really hard to get my hand on the arrow keys by feel, kind of like it was on Apple's older keyboards where they had those large left and right arrows and the small middle arrows. But one thing I do like a lot is having real tactile function keys. My MacBook Pro has this ridiculous touch bar that's no use at all to me. And it's always hard to touch when I need to touch something on it, but it's easy to touch for some reason when I accidentally brush a part of my finger against it. Can you tell I hate the touch bar? I really do. 
Finally, one of Apple's distinguishing marks is their display quality, and this is one area where the focus can't really match up to the MacBook Pro. Not only is this only a full HD display, instead of Retina or 4K resolution, it also doesn't have adaptive color or some of Apple's other OS integrated features that make the screen that much more pleasant on my eyes. But the display is certainly adequate, and I think it's on par with what I'm used to on my 2017 Dell XPS laptop. I think the most important thing I can offer though is my experience using this laptop and what I liked and didn't like, both about the laptop itself and how my different workflows translated from macOS to Kubuntu Linux. The first thing I have to say is that if you're considering switching from Mac or Windows to Linux, you should definitely treat yourself to a high-end laptop like this one, ideally with great out-of-the-box software setup like the Kubuntu Focus provides. And in fact, that's the main reason I gave the Kubuntu Focus a second look. Part of the big idea behind the Focus is having a turnkey Linux laptop that can be built to order and personally customized for a zero setup required experience. If you're like me, you don't wanna spend five hours installing software and tweaking Linux configs, you just wanna start doing work. And this laptop offers in some ways the best of both worlds. So let's dive right in. I'm gonna talk through a few of my specific workflows and then give my general impressions and a final verdict. I'm an open source software developer and almost all the software I work on runs natively on Linux. And a lot of it runs in Docker containers. On my Mac, one of the most frustrating parts of the OSS dev work is having to run some things in Docker that require file sharing between my Mac's file system and the Docker containers. It's so slow sometimes that it's actually embarrassing. There are ways to work around this issue, which I've used and even blogged about in the past, like setting up NFS for Docker containers. But like I said earlier, I wanna do work on a computer, not sit around tweaking things. And so the first test I did was setting up my own website for development on both my Mac and the Kubuntu Focus. In general, even with Docker for Mac using an extra layer of file system emulation, things are fast enough, even though they're slower than running them on the Focus. But as you can see from the Composer install process, which copies thousands of small files to the file system, running native Linux allows the Focus to absolutely demolish the Mac's performance in that benchmark. Another thing that I often do is build or compile software, and lately I've been having to recompile the Raspberry Pi Linux kernel over and over for PCI device testing on the Compute Module 4. I set up a cross-compile environment on my Mac inside a Debian VM, since that was the easiest way to get everything working, and I know some people will say in the comments that I could tweak this or that or spend a few hours to get a native cross-compile setup working on macOS. And yes, that's true, but this was the easiest way to get everything working reliably and quickly. I set up the exact same compilation environment on the Kubuntu Focus, except without a VM since I could install all the build tools natively, and even pop Raspberry Pi microSD cards straight into the laptop's microSD card slot, which my Mac doesn't have, and mount the ext4 file system natively. And you can see the focus is again able to shave a lot of time off the max compile times. In this case, it's not world changing, but it is really noticeable. Again, I could probably tune my Mac more to get a better result, but it's just easier when you're working with Linux based tools to just run Linux natively. In general, all my software development workflows are just as good, if not better on the Kubuntu focus. And sometimes they're a lot faster too. So a major victory for the focus there. The next thing I wanted to try was my media production workflows. And unfortunately for the focus, it's a little more of a mixed bag. First of all, for screen recording and live streaming, OBS on this laptop was very stable and ran a lot more smoothly than on my Mac. There were a few issues when I plugged in all my devices through my Thunderbolt 3 hub, but in general, everything just worked and the processor didn't seem to get taxed after the long periods of recording or streaming in OBS, likely due to its Nvidia GPU support. But as I got into editing my footage, I ran into my first major annoyance. On my Mac, I often boot the Mac, then plug in an external display, change resolutions, unplug it, go into clamshell mode, plug it back in, and do almost any order of operations I want. But when I started using the focus the same way, I ran into some quirks. The Mac handles switching between clamshell mode and multi-monitor mode just fine, even when hot plugging it and waking it from sleep. But on the focus, I usually had to restart to be able to get the UI to render correctly. Sometimes if I tried using only the internal display, my external display would start turning on and off continuously. Other times, if I woke the focus from sleep with my Thunderbolt connected display, the keyboard would just go away and I'd have to reboot the computer using the trackpad. 
I'm sure there are settings I could tweak to mitigate some of these issues, and there are probably some bugs in Thunderbolt 3 drivers I could be running into, but if the Focus is touted as something that replaces a MacBook Pro and just works, it also needs an asterisk. There are some things that Linux doesn't do as seamlessly, like resolution scaling, external display switching, and sleep and hibernation in clamshell mode. And to be fair, my Mac does also do weird things sometimes, but those problems almost always resolve with a quick close and open the lid cycle, and it really happens infrequently. With the Focus, though, a reboot was almost always required, and that's a lot more disruptive to my work. After deciding to abandon using the Focus with my external display in Thunderbolt 3 dock for the sake of getting my work done, I tested it with all my media production hardware, and it really surprised me how smooth and effortless everything was. I was expecting a lot worse after trying things out on the Raspberry Pi, but tools like VLC, Audacity, and the Caden Live Video Editor are all actually really good. No matter what footage I threw at them, AVC HD files for my Sony camera, ProRes or DNX HD files for my Blackmagic recorder, or any type of audio file, it ingested them and played them back without dropping any frames. That is, until I adjusted the volume or the screen brightness. Apparently, rendering the overlays for those things seems to disrupt playback. In VLC, it caused tearing and blacked out frames, and it would cause Caden Live to stutter. But in general, video editing just worked, and while I wouldn't call myself proficient with it, Caden Live feels like a solid option, and best of all, it's free. There are a number of minor annoyances I had moving from Final Cut Pro X to Caden Live, like the fact that so many options are not exposed directly within the timeline, like adjusting audio levels in an audio clip, but if I used the Focus and Caden Live for the next month, I would be at least 80% as productive when I edit videos as I am on my Mac right now. And that's saying a lot. On the Pi, editing HD footage was so slow that I just gave up. The Focus can handle even 4K footage without a hitch, just like my Mac. There are some seemingly minor features missing, though, that make up that last 20% of productivity. One glaring example is Caden Live's importer. On my Mac, there are tons of options to help the ingest and organize media. You can create proxy media, import and copy at the same time, consolidate media files, and work from multiple drives over the network a little more easily. In Caden Live, you have to do a lot of the plumbing yourself before you can get the media into the editor. Between that and many of the little differences like audio adjustments, video generators, and title editor differences, I wouldn't willingly give up what I pay for in Final Cut Pro X because either the quality or quantity of video I produce would have to suffer a little bit. One other thing I do a lot, though not quite as much this year, is post-process batches of RAW files from my cameras, like my Nikon D700 and D750. I tried out the included Darktable app, and it was generally good. It reminds me a lot of the Lightroom interface, though there are a few options and UI elements that I missed when tweaking image exposure and color options, or when quickly retouching an image outside of Photoshop. On my Mac, I use FastRawViewer, Lightroom, and Apple's built-in Photos app to process and store RAW files. Darktable seems like it's an adequate and snappy replacement for the ingest and editing, but the main thing that I think I'd miss from Apple is my iCloud photo library. Having every photograph I've ever taken in my hand and backed up in three places within seconds of import is really nice. And I can replicate that same workflow with open source software, but it would require some more setup time. But it is something I'd be willing to do since photo editor-wise GIMP and Darktable would take care of my needs pretty adequately. If Apple still made Aperture, it'd be a different story. I absolutely loved Aperture for photo processing and wish it were still a thing, but oh well. One minor gripe I had with the Focus was that it only has a micro SD card slot, not a full-sized SD slot, but I'm used to the dongle life with my current Mac, so I got over it. One thing I don't do at all on my Mac is play games. I was interested in trying out Steam Play on the beefy Focus laptop, since it has better gaming specs than any other computer I own. Steam Play lets Windows-only games run on Linux using Proton. I tested a few of the games in my library, and they mostly ran without a hitch, though the fans would go into rocket ship mode during gameplay. They got a little bit louder than my MacBook Pro when they were going full tilt. I played Quake to make sure things worked smoothly, and everything looked really good. Then I tested out Portal, which is another slightly older game, and it ran perfectly smooth as well. 
But finally, I spent a little time trying to get my favorite game of all time, Halo 3, running, but I kept having problems launching Master Chief Collection. I tried it in windowed mode, and I could hear the load screen music after a while, but the screen would never actually render. Other people did mention they could run it, so I could probably make it work, but for now I'm happy to play it on the Windows PC I keep around for testing things on Windows. And Halo. Actually, mostly I just keep it for Halo. There are a lot of other things I could talk about, but I'll sum up a few of the major points here. Battery life was a little disappointing, especially with the GPU enabled. And having to log out and log back in to switch graphics options for better battery life was kind of annoying. I only went through a few full battery cycles, but it seemed to last an average of about two to three hours. My MacBook Pro regularly gets three to five hours of battery with automatic graphics switching, so it would take some adjustment to have to go back to bringing a power brick with me most places. Also, the built-in speakers were a bit of a letdown compared to the MacBook Pro. The sound from my 15-inch MacBook Pro has a richness you wouldn't really expect coming from that kind of laptop. That will let the CM4 plug into, yeah, here it is. We'll let the CM4 plug into a CM3. I edit a lot of videos just using the onboard speakers on my Mac. They're that good. But I wouldn't do the same on the Focus. Its speakers are about average for laptop speakers. They're adequate, but they're not really that good. That will let the CM4 plug into, yeah, here it is. We'll let the CM4 plug into a CM3 compatible device. The final thing I'll note is there are some default UI features like wobbly windows that just felt tacky and reminded me of when Apple used to turn every UI element into a giant piece of candy or when Windows added rampant glassy effects all over the UI just because they could. It doesn't make for a better user experience and I wish those kind of features were disabled out of the box. There are a few very tiny UI annoyances that I ran into here and there, but that's getting into the realm of the subjective, so I'll leave it alone. To conclude, I think this laptop performs very well right in the same class as a high-end Mac, Dell, or Lenovo laptop. For my own needs, if I didn't need a couple features like my media editing workflow and a strong clamshell experience, I would consider this laptop. But because of my workflow and software needs, I still prefer using my Mac. But would I recommend the Kubuntu Focus M2 to someone considering the jump? Yeah. It's a fast, well-rounded laptop, and you could do a lot worse than Kubuntu Linux for a desktop OS. For certain users, especially developers not tied strongly into a Mac or Windows-only software workflow, it's a great option, and it's ready to go right out of the box. For more information or to order one, follow the link to kfocus.org in the description. Please subscribe, and until next time, I'm Jeff Gearling. Record two videos in a day? Why not? <laughs> My voice will kill me later. I also spec'd out a similar De Dell. Woo. If you watch Corridor Digital, they have a lot about this upper lip problem. Anyways, totally not related to the video that I'm recording. Let's go back. <laughs> not sit around tweaking things. <clears throat> Wait a second. I had notifications turned off. How does Mandalorian notifications get through when my wife's texts can't? Wait, El Pollo? I'm sponsored by a chicken. Audio adjustments, video janitors, janitors. Fans don't, well, I guess fans do get a little bit lighter because they counteract the force of gravity.